What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. All my social media is in the description box. This is going to be, um, oh, and this is nurses slash teacher appreciation week. Please thank a teacher. And with that being said, Oliver, when you made your little comment in this week's episode of Chasing Atlanta, that's what this review is, Chasing Atlanta season three, episode eight, I believe we're on. Where well, you was like, I was ready to hang up my music career and just become a regular old teacher. What you mean by that, boo? Ain't nothing regular about a teacher. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on with the episode, though. Because Oliver, for real, for real, I ain't even really got a whole lot of beef with you this episode. Just that little comment made me be like, for real, that's how you feel about us? But moving on, though. Um, this episode, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not clear on some things with this episode because I'm not sure if they showed us stuff in... Like, I'm not sure the time lapse. And what I mean by that is... We start the episode off, we see that we were born, meet up with Gardini, and meet up with um, Q, right? And they basically are having a conversation about Oliver. Like, Oliver is messy, Oliver this, Oliver that, Oliver this, Oliver that. And they kind of throw some stuff at Gardini. Gardini was like, well, Oliver is my good girlfriend. What's the tea? You know, I said that just like Gardini would say it, didn't I? Well, you know, that's my good girlfriend. What's the tea? But... They were basically, the whole thing about what happened down in Miami came up. Now, last I checked, Gardini was the one spreading the rumor. But in this particular scene, we were born, seemed to be past it, and were sort of over it, and were chilling with Gardini, thought that he was a nice guy, thought he was cool, invited him to their slumber party. I, they left. I was thinking that they, you know, was being cool or whatever. Um... But what did come up, they, they were talking about Oliver being messy and playing both sides and doing this and doing that. And then they started talking about Oliver and how, you know, because Gardini was like, well, you know, Oliver tried to get with, you know, my best friend trying to get on the show. Tried to sleep with my best friend so he could get on the show. And I was like, here we go. Um, once again, why, why are we bringing this up? But okay, because now we're talking about who slept with who to get on the show. We back on this whole who slept with who piece. And it comes up again later on in the episode. So I'll talk about it at a, later on. But I thought they left that meeting with We Were Born kind of being cool with Gardini, right? And the reason why I'm saying that is because that's going to kind of come up a little bit later on too. But they really weren't, didn't have a whole lot for Oliver. They were like, he messy, he this, he that, whatever. Then the very next scene is Oliver at his photo shoot and his promo shoot for the game show Twix that he did the song for and he's the spokesperson for the one. Um, and Jay Twan is with him. He was like, well, I invited Jay Twan. Now, mind you, both of them are throwing shade in their confessionals about each other. So that part I'm not even tripping on. But I'm just like, you so mad at, at Oliver. And Oliver is so messy. And Oliver is this and Oliver is that. Why the fuck you there? And that's why I said I wasn't sure of the timeline because the way he left that meeting and the way he was talking about Oliver, I wouldn't want to be stuck in a 500 room, you know, full of people with him. Like, I would still be too close for comfort. But for you to go to his video or, his, you know, his promo shoot for this project, I was just like, why are you there? If you, if he's so messy and he's so this and he always starting trouble and he's so full of shit, why the fuck are you there? Like, it's okay to say no. And I get it that you want to show and you want camera time and all that other stuff. But it was okay to say no. Because in the reason I'm saying all this for a reason. Because when I get to something at the end. Because I'm really confused right now about some things. So the next the next scene. Because I ain't. Oh, Montel and um, Cameron were at Fashion Week. They did some styling. They weren't, they weren't premiering any of their... Um, designs, but they were doing some styling and they were doing some things at Fashion Week. Now, I remember seeing this on... I follow both of them on social media. And so, I remember seeing this on their Instagram and stuff like that. And I love Montel. It's no secret that I like Montel. I like Montel's style. I like how he carries himself. And I was really happy to see that he had this opportunity and he had this exposure. Same thing with Cameron. I think that Cameron 
really, really wants to, uh, he's doing styling. And, you know, for both seasons, we saw him doing designs and doing, you know, fashion things. And so um, I was happy for both of them that they had the opportunity. Cameron said that was his first time in New York for Fashion Week. And I think that was his first time in New York, period. But it's definitely, I know he said that was his first time there for Fashion Week. I kind of got the impression that Montel had been to Fashion Week before, but if I'm wrong, correct me. Um, but again, they were there for the work, work, um, fashion show, which is a black owned company. And Montel was saying how he has just seen their company grow. That's kind of, a couple of things he said gave me the impression that he has been to fashion week before, but this was his first time, um, in this capacity at fashion week, but they were both really, um, they really had a really good time. It was a really good opportunity for them. We saw them walking. We saw them taking pictures. We saw them at the fashion show. We saw them meeting celebrities. Um, so it was, it was really a great opportunity for both of them. And I hope that they were able to network and build on some relationships that will take them in some other directions and maybe next year for fashion week, they'll be having their own, um, show. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. It's all about networking. It's all about, I said this about Oliver last week. It's all, well, the week before last. It's all about taking the opportunity and taking it and expanding it into other areas, into doing other things. So I was happy to see that. Now, I'm pretty sure, I want to make sure before I get to this slumber party, that that's all we saw. I'm pretty sure that's all we saw. No, I take that back. There was a scene with Troy and we were born. And Troy, Troy works, okay? And Troy just got a promotion on his job, so he wasn't able to go to uh, Miami. And we don't see him on in as many scenes. And I'm sure it's because a lot of times that they're filming certain things, it conflicts with his um, schedule. He works retail. And the thing about retail is not a 9 to 5. You could work Saturday, Sunday, and well, you know, 7 days a week. You could work the morning shift, the afternoon shift. And now that he's gotten a promotion and he's in management... That could be anything. You know what I mean? You could have to come in. It could be an emergency. You could have to stay late. People call out. That kind of stuff. I worked um, I worked retail, so I know there's no set nothing. Your schedule is just a suggestion, okay? Because you could come in whenever they feel like it and stay until whenever they, you know. So, I get it. But with that being said, we don't really know a lot about Troy. But let me tell you, though, what little bit I know about Troy, I think I like. I think I like. Um... But we were born and Troy were talking. And again, they rehashed the whole situation in Miami. Now, when they were talking to Troy, their whole attitude flipped. Because now it was Gardini is messy and Gardini this and Gardini that. And he was like, well, you know, Gardini did own it. You know, um, he did own it, but he's still not somebody. I'm, you know, I'm just not sure about how he moves. And, and I'm like, well, nigga, wasn't you just talking to him and you were like... Y'all was key keying it up and you invited him to the slumber party and everything was cool. Like, I didn't get any impression that there was an issue. I thought that you had forgive, forgive and forget and moved on. He said he did forgive Gardini because Gardini owned what he said, but he still kind of was giving Gardini the side eye. Now, here's the thing. And I ain't write all of this shit down. But one thing that I'm having a really, really big problem with, and I'm going to get there in a minute. I'm J Twan. I don't get it. I don't get you. I don't understand you. I don't know if you being extra for the cameras or if this is truly your personality. But you got you bipolar as a motherfucker because you shade every fucking body. There is not one person, for the exception of Berlin, there is not one person that has been on this show that you have not had something negative to say about. I can't think of one and. They all can be catty. Like, in their confessionals, everybody got catty shit to say. Like, that's what it's about. You know what I mean? It's all catty. But, it's a level that's different for me. It's a level that hit me a little different. The way J. Twan goes off and the way J. Twan gets messy and gets catty. It's... it's and it really turned me off this episode. And Berlin is not as bad as Jaytuan, but Berlin definitely you be making your little comments too, boo. But she's not as bad as Jaytuan, in my opinion. In my opinion, um, but they had a conversation with Shori. Like I said, they rehashed what kind of went down, um, and they talked about again Oliver being messy and all of it is and all of it that. Um, and invited him to the slumber party. It's a lingerie party. It's a, a Valentine's Day theme. You know, all that good stuff. Um, 
So we get to the party, right? And everybody's at the party except for Jaylon. Now, we see scenes of everybody dancing, they drinking, everybody getting loose, everybody having a good time. So then they decide, now mind you, Jaytuan Shade, who talking about some who wasn't there in lingerie, and it's a lingerie party. He talking about Montel being in a onesie, talking about something that ain't lingerie. And, you know, Berlin was like, well, that's pajamas. Who the fuck sleeps in the onesie? Don't nobody sleep in a goddamn onesie. And that's why I said Berlin be trying, because Berlin was like, yeah, some people do. You know, it's a thing. That's what people do. They was talking, He talked about Troy not being, that Troy was in a onesie. He wasn't in, um... He wasn't in um, pajamas. He talked about Oliver not being in pajamas. Oliver had on a tracksuit because he said he might have to run out. Something might come up. Maybe, you know, everybody ain't, everybody ain't comfortable in lingerie. Like, you can have a theme all you want. Hell, people have white party things, but you, I promise you somebody going to show up in a beige outfit. People have black party uh, um, uh, themes. I bet you somebody going to show up in a purple outfit. Like, it is what it is. People have themes, but if somebody, like, you're going to sit there and talk shit about your guests because they decided to wear a onesie instead of wearing some silk drawers, like, stop it. Like, I just thought, I was like, you just going to find something to talk about no matter what. You got something to say no matter what. So, they decided they're going to play Truth or Dead. And then version of the truth of this, everybody, it's a question. Everybody got to ask the question. Um, I don't know where the dead part came in, but okay. So the first thing was a little light. Q was like, well, I did, since Troy on his phone, I did him to show us the nastiest picture in his phone. And the impression that you get is Troy is very well endowed and that everybody got a chance to see how endowed Troy was. And now Troy got a whole lot of new friends. Okay. But it was cute. It broke the ice. Everybody was laughing. It was all good. It was all a good fun. So then Berlin's going to say to Oliver, I want to know, I heard a rumor that you slept with Dewan, and I just want to know if it's true. Oliver was like, well, first of all, I don't know you. So that's probably something I'm not going to share. Second of all, they're not here. Why are we talking about them? Let them be happy over in their apartment in Riverdale with their dog and have their good life. Ain't no need for me to say nothing. That, you know, like, it's no need for me to address that. Well, that sort of gives the impression that the answer is yes. But to all of us credit, he did not confirm the situation. He let it go. But I feel the same way. That's the, se that's really, that's the third time this season, the second time this episode that y'all bringing up two people that's not even on the show anymore. And it'd be one thing. If Devon didn't want to be on the show. But from my understanding, Devon was asked not to come back. Now, I could be wrong. And I'm correct me if I am wrong. But why are we having a conversation about people who are not here? I, I don't get it. And especially something that intimate and something that could be that damaging. I just thought that was a little messy. But I give all of a credit for not speaking on it. Now, so Q decides to ask... Well, I see that Gardini is not here. I heard he got uninvited. What's up with that? Honey, J. Twan flipped his motherfucking lid. I mean, he goes off. He started off calm. And basically what he said was that he believes in loyalty and him and Jaylon are friends. And, you know, Jaylon said that he wouldn't feel comfortable with Gardini being here. And because his loyalty is to, to Jaylon and not Gardini, he uninvited Gardini. Now, unfortunately, at the last minute, um, Jaylon couldn't come. He had to, um, he had to go do K. Michelle's hair, so he couldn't make it. Now, I don't know if it was editing, but I felt like that was a perfectly reasonable response. I felt like that was a perfect, perfectly understandable reason, and that even though you did invite Gardini on the front end, maybe you sub subsequently had a conversation with Jaylon, and he said, I am not comfortable being about, being around um, Gardini, and if he is there, I will not show up. And because you are cool with Jaylon and you just met Gardini, you made a decision. I'm okay with that. I am 100% okay with that. What I'm not okay with is the way you flipped out. In the confessional, you start calling Q all kinds of ugly motherfuckers, lopsided, sided heads, messy. You just like your friend Gardini being messy. I don't feel like the, I don't feel like the question was messy. And y'all are playing truth to dare. There's no rule that says that a truth to dare question got to be about sex. It was a truth to dare question. He was asking you a question. And truth, what's the reason? What's the tea? 
What's the reason why Gardini was uninvited? You gave him the answer. Move on with the game. But he goes off. And like I said, he starts calling Q all kinds of ugly, messy, this, and uh, you, this, that, and lopsided head, and Gardini, messy ass, Gardini this, and Gardini that. And I was like, again, it was like he went, again, I don't know if it was editing or what, but it was like he went from zero to 100. Next thing you know, he is yelling and cussing at Q, talking about he don't give a fuck about chasing, he don't give a fuck about reality, he don't give a fuck about Dallas, and he a real bitch, and he just gonna fuck somebody up. Then next thing you know, they see, I guess it was production or whatever, holding him back. Let me go. Let me go. Now, what was fucking funny was that Q was just like this the whole time. Q ain't flinch. Q ain't move. And I guess, in Q's mind, I guess he was thinking, that nigga feeling froggy, let him jump. Let him come on over here. I felt like... <laughs> I felt like he was thinking he'll walk over, but he'll limp back. <laughs> because Q didn't move. Q did not break. You know what I'm saying? He didn't get excited. He didn't yell back. He didn't say nothing back. He was just sitting on the couch looking at him like, you stupid motherfucker. And if you want to hit me, come on and hit me. I don't know, y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think, but I just didn't get it. I ain't understand it. J. Twan, you know, maybe it's something I ain't see. Maybe it's some production shit. Maybe it's editing. Maybe somebody told you to act a fool. But your, this whole episode, you were just extra. This And for as much as you wanted to talk about Gardini, you in this episode were worse than Gardini ever was. Because at least with Gardini, you knew you may not have always agreed or liked Gardini a style or how. Because, you know, last season I wasn't crazy about Gardini at the beginning of the season either because I didn't really like his style. I felt like he inserted himself in situations he didn't need to insert himself in. And I felt like he had a whole lot to say about shit he didn't need to have nothing to say about. However, what I will say about Gardini is you knew where you stood with Gardini and he ain't never flip flop. Now that he ain't never do. If he liked you, he liked you. If he didn't, he didn't. He never flip flop. Now he might explain, but he never flip flop. J. Twan, for as much as you accuse Oliver of changing with the wind, your ass, I just don't get, you got a problem with everybody on this show, but you film with everybody on this show. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm confused. I'm just confused. And again, maybe I missed something. Tell me. Put it in them comments. Y'all let me know if something I missed. Break it down for a sister. Anyway, that's Chasing Atlanta. Let me know what you think. Drop it in the comments, please.